Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you may remember some months back, one month back, and one month back, uh, we met here to talk about Vision 2013 uh, strategic plan or blueprint introduced by Sri Lankan government. Uh, government expect by 2013, yeah, Sri Lanka hopes to become a sustainable upper middle income. Indian Ocean Hub with an economy that is prosperous, competitive, and advanced, an environment that is green and flourishing, and a society that is inclusive, harmonious, peaceful, and just. Uh, in this endeavor, the President of Sri Lanka has appointed an expert committee headed by Professor Mohan Munasinghe to prepare a strategic uh, plan on sustainable Sri Lanka vision and strategic path. You may already know there's some information about this uh, strategic plan in the last time when we met uh, mrs parusi one year she explained some facts about the new project new program vision 2013 today also they have come to meet you to get some feedback ideas and observation from you to further enrich the uh, this uh, strategic document on Sri Lankan uh, Vision 2013. So I first of all I must uh, warmly welcome Professor Sumati Pala, who are the members of the expert committee, Professor Hemantriana Singh and Ms. Tarusi Vanyarachi. In the meantime I must uh, I should welcome warmly welcome our head of departments, members of the academic staff and Ms. Student. I welcome my body be invited Ms. Tarusi to briefly describe the, about the project. Hello, thank you, and so sorry for the delay. Um, the co hard copies of the document will be distributed shortly. Uh, basically, I think I introduced last time what the project is, but I will go again because I think there are some new faces today. Uh, President went to the UN in 2015 in September. And then he returned, and he, when he returned in 2015 September, he pledged at the UN to provide leadership for Sri Lanka to meet the Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 goals, by the year 2030. Then after he returned, um, the first thing he did was he reached out to Professor Mohan Murasinghe, who in his, uh, uh, who he believes is one of the best uh, Sri Lankan climate change advocates, and he's also Sri Lanka's only Nobel laureate. Um, so he reached out to Professor Mohammed Singh and asked him to independently appoint a committee to write the vision map that we need to help Sri Lanka reach these goals. Um, in doing that, Professor Mohammed Singh reached out to Professor W. Sumatipala, Professor Hemantirana Singh, uh, Professor Stiri Hetege, Professor Savitri Gunasekara, long range of long list of uh, professors um, senior academics, um, experts, um, civil society, independent uh, activists, as well as uh, you know leaders in the private sector like Professor, uh, Dr. Hamsa Jaisuria, Ms. Darius Silavikramanayaka. So a very diverse group of uh, professionals and academics got together over a period of a year and put, wrote the, this document that's in front of you. Um, and uh, I think I will not go into the structure of the document. Uh, you can also have a copy now, but I think Professor Sumatipala and Professor Rana Singha can give you a, the structure, how the document is structured. But just before that, I will tell you what we are doing now. Uh, in August, on the 6th of August, uh, Pro President launched this uh, document. And also with this document, it's only the draft. It's only a first draft. And with this first draft, we launched the Jatika Tirsara Katikava, the National Sustainability Discourse, which aims to, be, it's essentially a public consultation process to get feedback from you know people all over the country with a special focus on universities uh, and revise the document, fill any gaps, and truly make sure that uh, truly the people's voice is uh, represented in this document. So this is a very initial step that we're taking today in engaging the university community um, in getting their feedback. So today we will open the floor to get your feedback. And also, um, 
we over the past couple of weeks we've reached out to we had sessions like this in Colombo University, Sabaragamo, um, Open University, uh, and tomorrow we're going to Peradeniya. Day after overwhelm us, so very uh, long list of universities we've been covering these few weeks, and we are very excited for the session. And I think Professor Narasimha and Professor Sumati Pala can tell us how the document is structured and. Uh, then we can, uh, Professor Sam Singh, we can open the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think he'll be uh, reading the, or you'll be seeing the document. Uh, so, uh, well, coming from what you truly said, uh, well, uh, I'd like to say that uh, this one, uh, captures the sustainable development goals. There are 17 of them and 169 uh, uh, targets. Uh, and uh, that, uh, that encompasses uh, economic, environmental, and uh, social uh, aspects. So, and also some are cross-cutting, like gender uh, is cross-cutting, and also there's uh, other aspects, uh, mostly in environmental arena, Risha, cross-cutting. So in the, in the development of this document, the main emphasis was that we can't stand alone on these three pillars, but these three pillars of sustainability are integrated. So uh, there were three clusters, environmental cluster, uh, um, social cluster, and economic cluster. And uh, well, uh, these clusters were headed by personnel. And uh, so, although, and then there was uh, this diverse theme. I mean, it's very important to say that this is uh, not an environmental document or economic document, uh, but the difference between this, uh, uh, this vision, sustainable vision 2030, and uh, the rest of the action plans and visions are that this is a comprehensive, all-inclusive one. And uh, it, it really uh, uh, quest towards sustainability per se. So in developing the, for example, at the environmental cluster, which me and Professor Suman Pala headed, uh, we, uh, we came up with the sustainable development goals, which are really uh, environmentally related, and also looked at the, our environmental scenario, the policies, the plans, the programs, and the setting of uh, the scenario in the country and then came up with the most pressing issues of environment that we need to deal with because we really have uh, a limited time and we need to target ourselves. And therefore, we came up with, especially, for example, like you may have seen, we dealt, uh, I'm only talking about environment, but others are also like that, uh, land degradation, deforestation, uh, then climate change and, also, and the other disasters. Then we have the environmental pollution, land, water, and air pollution, then uh, waste mismanagement. Those were the main things that we selected based on our Sri Lankan scenario, which is included in this 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And then we identified the issues, the status, the issues, and the gaps, and then uh, we uh, gave uh, the recommendations uh, as to what should really be addressed in order to uh, 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 address these issues positively. So uh, in doing that, we all had discussions with the social and the economic group, because on its own, we can't give recommendations, uh, because uh, when we give recommendations, maybe it will counteract with the social and the economic aspects as well. So we took all three into account, but the main emphasis in that cluster was environment. Likewise, in the social cluster, although they came up with the same uh, methodology, uh, they had discussions, very in-depth discussions with the environment cluster as well as the social cluster. So therefore, this document piece really encompasses everything. Although it emulates uh, uh, these certain aspects that the environment, uh, social, and economic, and uh, uh, so uh, the idea was to provide a vision. Actually, this is not an action plan. This is not a strategic document, but this is uh, providing visionary, uh, uh, a vision for all the 
the, the ministries in the government sector, the private sector, the communities, the universities to take up in their own action plans, own policies, own strategies and action plans in their respective sectors to infuse sustainability into their planning process. And uh, so that is the idea, and not only that, but uh, I think because based on this one, we after this, uh, based on the Sustainable Act, uh, Ministry of Sustainable Development was set up, and also um, the Sustainable Commission was set up. Uh, so the, the Sustainable Commission is mandated to monitor the activities uh, 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 in, with regard to sustainability in all the ministries, uh, to coordinate with them and to work with them so that uh, these uh, expectations will be realized. So that main coordination and monitoring role will be done and also the facilitation role will be done by the Sustainability Council, uh, which comes under the Ministry of Sustainable Development and Wildlife. And at the moment, it is vested under the Presidential Secretariat, the President. And it all, so this vision is uh, the main thing which provides the impetus for uh, everyone, uh, including not only I, I talked about the ministries, but including the private sector and uh, non-governmental sector, semi-government sector and everything uh, to infuse uh, their, or to align their action planning into sustainable, uh, uh, sustainability. Thank you. Chancellor, uh, uh, Ms. Musari and uh, everyone uh, members. Uh, yes, uh, now I think you got some idea after Ms. Hemanti gave you a briefing. Uh, I was told that this was circulated before, the soft copy was given. Uh, maybe some of you have read it, right? So as uh, we understand, uh, some of uh, you must have gone through and then we may have some ideas, some suggestions uh, or questions maybe for improvement, things like that. Just to let you know, as uh, Prasai Mandi said, now sustainable development goals you look at. There are 17 of them. Four are biological or based, right, natural. Then you have eight of them on top of biological, the uh, social. So in the uh, 17 goals, eight of them are social aspects are there. Then we have another four on the economic side to, to categorize, right? 17th one is combining everybody, right? So uh, it is that environment that we do, are, unfortunately we do are only here, we could have had that one from economic, one from social work that would be better. But the you know, timing, and as you know, all of them are very busy, and we are you know in various places, and uh, so this is the first time that I'm participating. I was abroad for one month, and you know just came back. So anyway, so if you look at this, you can see that even though we talk of sustainable development, we are thinking of three pillars now, as we say, economy cannot go along without looking at the environment and social aspect is the most important. In the goals also I said eight of them are social related. Four of them are environmental or bio biosphere related and four economic related, right? So therefore, when you talk of development as a developing country, we cannot just think of development. Yeah, we can learn from so-called developed countries, right? And we, we are fortunate that we start our development Having this in mind, the environment and the social aspects. If you don't have that in the base, then you have you cannot come back rectifying them, right? So that's the main thing. And um, the structure is, of course, you can see now, those three areas are there. Then there are also areas that we cannot put them to one sector. They are cross-cutting, for example. If you take, uh, for example, climate change, it is not only... Uh, the social aspect, economic, and environmental, everything is there. So therefore, in this document, there are areas where we have put as cross-cutting areas, right? So there are, you know, we cannot separate them, so that, that's why. And just to let you know that under these separate areas, we have key points I have been 
identified and recommendations are given. So our aim is now as you know educators, uh, seniors and also the students and others, this is for the future. 2030, vision for 2030, so it is for the future generations to come. So therefore, we would like you all to look at carefully and maybe we have missed some things, you can, you know, tell them and if you agree or disagree, if everything can come, we will look at it again. As, you know, this is not the final, even though we put them together, it took some time and diverse opinions were there, you can see the team, a lot of people were there, so we have collect them and person Mohan Munasinghe did a great job for putting them together and bringing them together. We had several meetings and different people wrote, right? Putting them to a, a unified structure was also difficult, but it has been done. So now it's for you all as learners throughout this country to look at and, you know, help the, uh, the government, IRS ministries to take action. And uh, it can be, you know, immediate, midterm, or long term, right? So uh, we can talk of environment, of course, because we are not economics or sociologists. But uh, uh, if you have any questions, we can, you know, always discuss. You know, if you raise any points, we, we can give our opinion. And also, if you cannot answer, we can take it up. Of course, this we will take it up, and then we can uh, discuss, and then come up, come back to you all. Also. So uh, that's the basic thing I want to say. You look at this, you can see. Since I'm working in I'm like a Ministry of Environment and you know various other areas, uh, even at present, our problem has been water is the main problem. Remember recently the president was giving a speech and he was saying, you know, water is better than the blood, right? Signal is that. So he has got this into mind now. So therefore, now water, when we talk of water, we have to talk of uh, our irrigation systems, catchment areas, land degradation, all that is there. So we are now actually making some projects to go to GCF, uh, Global Climate Fund, maybe some of you know, under climate change as a, you know, window opportunity for funding to you know, countries like ours. Then also, uh, now this week, there's uh, a World Bank team, and we are discussing uh, how the future projects can be developed, taking into consideration mainly the sustainability. Not just project, not just, uh, you know, industries coming in, but we are always, you know, government is now very clear that Whatever development that is taking place will be have, will have a sustainability component in it. So that consideration is always there. So with that, uh, maybe we should open up for them to their views also. Huh? Just to add, just to add that we are recording this session, so we will be creating a transcript of all the uh, discussions and owner bahasa king karanpa bahasa bahasa king will be recording it instead of taking notes so and uh, once all this is compiled all the uh, the opinions the feedback will be compiled into a report given to a review committee uh, so thank you very much i hope everyone uh, contributes Good afternoon. So I'm from Department of Zoology and Environment Management. Actually, <coughs> I participated in this meeting last month.
policy on uh, science and technology, science, technology and innovation. So entrepreneurship and other things will come in there. So, uh, on the basis of uh, and also hope to invite the, the president. And this will be handed over. And these will be you know, further further discuss and improve. That, 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 that. Actually, uh, the ministry is now named as uh, what? Big ministry now. Okay. Science, technology, research, and innovation, plus uh, entrepreneurship, uh, and then, uh, you know. <laughs> so, so uh, Minister Dr. Dongam is also keen on this, and uh, working very closely with the President because the sustainability comes in. He always has meetings with people like this. Yeah. Without science and technology and innovation, the country cannot. So, so, yes. plus, you know, so we had a very recently the Korean expert coming in and giving some advice. Mm -hmm. Korea has jumped, you know, there's a leapfrog from there. So we are getting some advice from there and hopefully uh, some of these things can be. Of course, uh, we, we will be always looking at the environment. Mm -hmm. when we uh, generally the, the individuals have to go through uh, from age 5 to 18 years. But now, even the context of other countries also, we can see like uh, individuals are quickly uh, getting into the university, like they don't wait to go 20 years of age, and they quickly enter into the university, and they might complete the PhD by the age of 25 and uh, move forward. Uh, so therefore, a lot of years, maybe we can combine the knowledge, like if you look at the kids in the new generation, they quickly grasp things and they can quickly learn with the different technology, but still, to think of uh, going over the same lifespan. Like, if you look at the uh, age of the human being, like it's great, gradually coming down, right? maybe 70 years and it might come down 65 years, but still if you think of that the, this modern human can learn the things quickly and if it's just stick into the same uh, age horizon, I think. So that is something that you have to correct at the big picture. I get that. And I myself have been talking about it. But even the ministers want to change it, it's difficult for them. There are other reasons for that. So therefore, this has to be, uh, you know, thoroughly discussed and maybe the university system has to, you know, really put their efforts to, you know, if you want to change the system, the system. We put here to look at Thank you. Thank you. Rural poverty and climate change. I believe that the majority of rural people are poor because of having lack of strong coping mechanism to deal with unexpected natural disasters. So, if it is possible to improve the coping ability of the rural poor, then they will be able to overcome the difficulties. I'm just wondering whether there is a proposal for that if you look at the index uh, and look at the cross-cutting themes there's the first one is climate change disasters and air quality uh, disasters I believe has been addressed in that uh, this is page uh, 230 um, but you you are welcome to add more to it I mean, it's just a chapter uh, the disasters. You know, he was especially speaking over the rural sector, mainly the mainly agriculture is, you know, we know the drought and floods. Agriculture sector, they are really uh, faced with this drought problem, even still, you know, two, three years. So um, it is addressed here, and uh, we have taken one example, actually, um, the pollution, for example, uh, can be just given there for the remedial situation. But then for this water situation, even, um, you know, I don't know whether we have, you know, categorically mentioned that as a disaster. So the, these are, of course, uh, listed. And associated with that, of course, we are developing some things, as I said before, uh, uh, you know, Related climate change, we are going to get some assistance 
through green climate fund that will help this water retention water management uh, and also uh, um, along the system president is you know launching and you know we have been talking so through that process our our ancestors had some remedial measures no so we are we are taking that into consideration under uh, some of these uh, actions that is that is the way we are going but things may, may new things have to be done i think here we are not uh, completely done because uh, actually uh, this is uh, these are not uh, the action plans this is just to identify uh, the issues that are very very uh, uh, you know relevant to us and uh, i'm request uh, because uh, i think the president and secretariat uh, in fact this expert team is not able to uh, beyond that because uh, the setup uh, the ministries the departments the the individuals, uh, the, the other organizations really should take it up uh, and use this as a guiding principle. So like even with the water, I mean, the, okay, just as an example, have been identified climate change impact and it's worsening the drought in the dry zone, uh, has been identified in page 234 and the issues have been identified with the present status and, uh, and especially the likely impacts uh, is not only on, you know, on environment, but economy and society and environment, like all three pillars. And then remedies and measures and implementations, there's no targets. There's just some, uh, some identification of uh, this could be a good idea. And for what a fact, I know that uh, this national adaptation strategy uh, has been developed by the Ministry of uh, uh, environment, uh, Ministry of Mahavali Development and Environment. Uh, it was done uh, five years ago and now it's uh, redoing it uh, with the aid of the ADB. So that really gives a national adaptation strategy for Sri Lanka encompassing all this, uh, uh, how we would uh, adapt ourselves uh, to climate change. And also I must say that in fact <laughs> both of us who represent maybe is a little tilted because uh, uh, we are representing the environmental cluster and we also represent uh, the climate change uh, uh, <laughs> the sector. But anyway, uh, this, for example, this in the, we are in the process of preparing the third national communication for the UNFCC. And, uh, well, Sri Lanka, although, I mean, I mean, we are, like you said, I mean, we are in a good wicket. At least we are... The government has taken an undertaking that it has realized that, uh, okay, there's things that we need to address. And uh, some time ago, a long time ago, we were saying that we emit very little to the atmosphere by way of greenhouse gas emissions. So, and uh, we need to develop a lot and uh, no one can tell us that not to stop development. I mean, there was some discussion along those lines. And we were like, you know, pointing our fingers to the developed nations and say, you all are the culprits. But, uh, I mean, but still we, um, Sri Lanka signed this uh, UNFCC agreement, climate change agreement in 1992, ratified in 1994. And we have been like party to all the other protocols, including the most recent one, Paris Agreement in 2015. And this the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals also is in line with that. So, I mean, actually, we are very proud to say that uh, Sri Lanka has submitted, uh, call it INDCs, which is Intended Nationally Determined Contributions, which is, which is purely voluntary, saying that we would really reduce the, the impact of climate change in the sectors which are really the most significant, like the transport, the power generation, and even agriculture, land use, forestry, waste. And they had given targets, and we given our actions as a country. So, I mean, uh, so that is the undertaking and those are there and this document has looked at all that and given some direction as to, okay, this is the way to go. So, therefore, I think uh, uh, the Sri Lanka is committed and like you said, yes, NDG, if we just uh, analyze our success, I think uh, maybe on the face value we might say nothing has been achieved. But to analyze, when you analyze it, most of it I mean, most of it has been may achieved, maybe not 100%, but to a satisfactory level. So we need to put it. It's a very good suggestion. We, because then, MD, this is an expansion 
of the MTG. So that, uh, okay, it gives some, some encouragement for us to move forward. So, I mean, so under the university community, we are so happy to be here. Uh, we are also from universities. Uh, because you all are the, I mean, the present as well as the next generation. And especially the students here. I mean, unless and until you take it into your attitudes, because whatever said then done is really you, within you, who is the, the pioneer. And if you decide to make a change, it will be done. So I think this is the good place to be with the teachers and the students to move, take it take this forward. It's not just refining the document and putting it in some shelf. No, this just making it operational is what is expected. I am an uh, undergraduate at the uh, University of California Department of International Studies. So I just read through the gender part of this document and uh, I think uh, we should introduce some law reforms to it because uh, we have some loopholes in the current laws. So uh, we should update with the world and uh, like reconstruct the the laws and all so uh, and we should uh, educate the society about it and uh, current laws are very conventional so uh, I think uh, we should have some reforms to the gender laws do you have any specific suggestions like uh, we should uh, update with the world like LGBT rights and all uh, because the current world like uh, like they are uh, accepting the LGBT rights like country, country, countries like uh, Australia. Absolutely, I think uh, perhaps it's, it's somewhat controversial here but in many parts of the world it's a basic right to have right to marriage, right to exist, a lot of these things are not that controversial. So perhaps a document like this could be the stepping stone to achieving that change. Um, also, gender, uh, an issue with gender was that uh, uh, there are topics like, it's a very cross-cutting theme, right? Like this, we have uh, topics like land tenure, uh, land rights issues that are um, discussed, but then there are issues like that cross cut, like where women have issues in the, especially in the rural parts of the country, of having um, access to own land. So issues like that, it's very cross cutting, and so it's very complicated to get that into a vision document. And there are many gaps, like you said, loopholes and gaps um, in this document as well, because it's really hard to really get it all into a document. But if you can provide concise, you know. Um, comprehensive feedback to us, we could really incorporate it and provide a more, uh, you know, less, uh, uh, more comprehensive document. Thank you. Uh, in the coming decades, uh, Sri Lanka is going to face a youth bulge. So, did you address this issue uh, when suggesting economic, uh, under, that means, did you consider this on the economic cluster? Youth, uh, so due to the, um, the committee being heavily uh, <laughs> environmental and also age-wise uh, less youth oriented, um, we decided to, uh, halfway through the process, they decided to youth uh, transgenerational perspective. Economic and social uh, problems. So I think it should be addressed. So one of the chapter is youth transgenerational perspective. Uh, it's the final cost-cutting theme, I believe. Uh, yes. Yes, T9. And uh, that it has been written by a group of youth, but it still could use more uh, work in terms of... Um, by the youth bulge, you meant that there'll be more youth demographically than the aging population, right? Uh, that means in the next decade, it will be double. Yeah, in this report also, we have mentioned the population growth has taken as 1%. Economic growth of 5%, uh, population growth 1%. So 
uh, you know, it, it's a you know rough figure. It's mentioned here. So, I mean, your point is actually very, very valid. We may, you know, consider that. Too. Yeah, yeah. As he says, you know, youth came in at the last stage only. <laughs> so, uh, because you can see the names, yeah, all, we are all old people here in the team. But they're very young at heart, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, the next question is, uh, have you considered the adult learning uh, methods? Now, most of the people are turning to their adult age. Yeah, so they have to learn. They also should learn. So did you, anything address? I believe uh, Professor Savitri Gunasekara and Dr. Professor Nelufadi Mayer worked on it. Uh, and the age and gender came together a lot. But uh, as even Professor Lakshman Disana, Vice Chancellor of Columbia University, who is a demographer, uh, pointed out, we need a separate section on make how uh, we have an aging population that's uh, growing and also there's to address the specific issue of demographics and adapting to changing demographics. Um, we need a separate chapter. That's been one of the uh, feedback we've gotten. Um, but there are separate, very minute sections on it as well, like in gender and also in healthcare. Um, yeah. That, that we need to clarify that. But then, um, let's uh, since you talk about this uh, water business, now we have looked at at present after this document, uh, overall possible. Now, if you take the water availability in this country, right? Rainfall is the main thing that develop uh, streams and all things. But if you take the whole country, rainfall has not changed. The total rainfall is same. However, dry areas getting drier, wet areas getting more wetter, more rain, erratic rainfall. And that leads to flooding and, uh, you know, uh, landslides and various other disasters, right? So there is a view now we are putting up, actually, we need your help as well. Trans, uh, uh, trans basin water transfer. In order as a remedy for the disasters and supply water, if you can transfer the excess water from the western, southwestern side to northeastern side, it would be ideal. So, it, it, you know, some of the things are in the preliminary stage. For example, Ginganga, Kaluganga, if you can, you know, take at different stages towards Hambantota and eastern side, dry side, you know, the problem in the you know flooding will be solved and the water problem there will be solved. It's, there's a big vision now here, and also Kalani and other places going towards Waimba, right? To prevent flooding, prevent landslide, and supplying water in those areas. So it's a big project now. We are in that area now, but it's a it's a massive thing. But there are social problems and various other things will come. Environment problems are so there how to divert and various things. So various options are there now. Just to give you an indication that we are looking at water is a main problem uh, to be. Yeah, I think, yeah, if we can do that, that might be an ideal solution for this situation. Uh, what I wanted to point out here is, um, since this is going to be a version document, if we can be very specific, we are going to be strategized in the future, even if it is with government and change and all are integrated, but if we can be very specific here, if pupils are not going to work, we may can, we should not, I mean, strategize it in the future. So, likewise, we can go through the whole document. Um, we may can, like, you know, more, uh, yes, modify it. And I think, uh, well, we can't say that because it's so variable. Uh, it's so variable because, uh, well, what we have said is that because uh, as we all know, because especially it's tagged along with uh, this uh, CKDU and CKDU is not everywhere. CKDU is only mostly uh, in areas where there's hardness and chloride and then others adapt to it. So therefore, I mean, uh, so but in general, what uh, has been said is that when there's, uh, there's uh, it's the option of uh, getting water from others, the surface water, do that. But there are there are instances where there's no water at all. Even at this point of time, 
there are places where we can experience in drought for a long time. We don't even understand it in the being in the desert province. So in those areas, I mean, I mean, there's no adoption but to get water from the nucleus. So therefore, I mean, the, 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 what we have said is, if the adoptions are available, don't go. And put it to you. So otherwise, uh, proceed. So uh, those are the things that we have said, but it's very difficult to come up with the strategy because the, the country is so variable, uh, especially with regards. Yes, you mentioned that if there are no any other options, we can go to the, the pupils. But the other thing is nowadays, you, can, you already know that the companies use pupils too. I mean, double policies and uh, action plans and, and with that, penalties, we, we can achieve, uh, uh, we can go far, uh, far ahead than this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so there will be something coming up on this in the policy area. In the near future, yeah, we are, we are thinking. <laughs> so, panel of experts. So, this is a, a comment on a tertiary and a university education. So, page number 136. So, uh, last uh, few years, actually, within last decade, uh, we got uh, funds from World Bank, if I say, IRQ project, ATB project. So, we got a lot of huge grants. And uh, most of the impacts and uh, the remedial measures indicated in this uh, document were actually discussed uh, when we apply for these grants and most of these type of things we implemented. And also uh, uh, under impacts, first one, graduates have difficulty finding jobs creating unemployment of educated youth. I think this is... Uh, uh, I match with some of the academic disciplines. If I say that most of the students who protest in the Colombo are graduates, external degree graduates. So our universities produce large number of external degree graduates who are unemployed who protest. And if I say about my faculty, science faculty, and some of the other faculties, even management, and even some departments in um, humanities faculty, social sciences. So it's, this type of uh, problem is not there. This is, I think, we have to think when we put a, such a general statement here, and also uh, diversify and modernize the curriculum. The thing that we have discussed decades, and we conduct so many seminars, workshops, and we change our curriculum. So the same thing repeats here, and also research sales and university-based consultancy. We have consultancy sales. We provide consultancies. And also it says in English language proficiency. According to my knowledge, in our university, all the graduates are getting a certificate course. They get a certificate on English, and we do train them. And uh, the last sentence, it says, delegate more authority and decision-making powers to universities. What type of powers do you expect to delegate more? Because in the university, we have faculty board, senate, and council. And I think uh, the, these things we have to, I think, discuss a little more. Because higher education, we need a little more progressive approach rather than these decades talk uh, discussed uh, topics. I also totally agree with what uh, Professor Apa said. During the last 24 years, this uh, charge is, uh, this allegation is uh, done by private and government authorized universities. This is no more true. I think one, one solution we can do is, as I mentioned earlier, we should make, uh, we should make uh, job creators rather than job seekers. That is entrepreneurship. On the other hand, we should uh, get the support from the private sector. You know, in overseas, many overseas countries, private sector greatly help to support the education. But here, what we are doing, we are preparing graduates, preparing employees for them, but they do nothing. They do not help us to train or prepare our graduate. They do not at least provide uh, some amount of money. Now, what we what we should suggest, we should get more support from the private sector and international organization. Uh, I, I totally agree with, uh, with what you said, Professor. Can I, can I, uh... <laughs> Put, I mean, it's very true what you said, but unfortunately, this document. In the meantime, is Professor, uh, our our private sector and public sector uh, do not expand proportionately as we produce graduates. Yeah, that's, mm. that's not 
to issue. Uh, actually, uh, Professor Ampa, this is uh, this document is a general one, more general one. And although at this point of time, maybe University of California, maybe certain faculties, maybe certain departments, maybe University of Sri Javadana Falls, or certain departments, faculties may may be uh, having this situation, advanced situation, but others are still struggling. And there are many universities we are maybe even far ahead to us, but still some are lagging behind. So this is a sort of a like a general consensus. And also I think we have mentioned it here on page 137, uh, this promote public-private partnerships, programs to expand opportunities for higher education. And also we have mentioned these cells for research, cells for entrepreneurship, and uh, I'm sure, like, you know, in most of the universities now, that is going to be the mainstay, even at this point of time. Uh, although I'm a graduate of this university, which I'm so happy about, uh, I'm now working for 35 years in the University of Sri Javadanapura. And uh, I'm so happy that we have, uh, we have established rather recently, although we have this uh, Department of Entrepreneurship rather recently, Entrepreneurship Innovation Cell. And uh, it's, it's mostly run by students, and uh, it's really uh, glad to see so many enterprises run by the students, and we have already 28 registered ones, 28 run by students. I mean, I mean, you all can participate in the whole thing. I mean, because you are the lifeline here. So that let it be t-shirts, let it be food, let it be clothes, some shoes. My God, I was so surprised, but so happy. And our Vice Chancellor is also so happy. I'm sure that the university also is doing the same thing. So, I mean, those are forward uh, uh, thinking and, uh, you know, these uh, ideas for the for the present and the future as well. So why we have uh, mentioned other things also is because, uh, I mean, this is a more general document, that is why. But it's really why we are standing here talking to you is because we have to take it up. We have to put all these ideas into our um, corporate plans. Yeah. Maybe like university corporate plans, department, faculty corporate plans, and university corporate plans, and show, okay, we have taken these ideas and we have achieved. And when we have the next document, like you very rightly said, okay, what's the progress of MDs? What's the progress of this one? And then move forward to another document. God knows what kind of a document we have to come up with because it's all international, right? But then we will say, okay, we have moved forward. But I must say one thing very sadly, though, delegate more authority and decision-making powers to universities because... Uh, I think a uh, vice chancellor might have to discuss with other vice chancellors as well. There is a big problem here. I'm representing the faculty of graduate studies, and recently we had the big row uh, in the Senate. Why is it that we can't decide our own postgraduate courses? We have we have to send it to the UGC, and since I became the dean for three years, none of the courses have been operationalized. Just going to and fro, to and fro, to and fro, to the UGC back, UGC back. So then we made a decision, okay, you will know about it, a last Senate, okay, if the UGC doesn't uh, uh, give us a green light within one month, okay, sorry, we are going to start. I mean, you can't be just going like that. So unfortunately, we don't, although universities have the Senate and the Council and everything, we don't have the power. So, I mean, this is wrong. <laughs> so, eh, maybe the Vice Chancellor can decide something, right? That is up to him and the CVCD to decide. Otherwise, he'll be suffering forever, not me, but everybody here. So, I mean, those are also things that we need to put and do something about. <laughs> I'm a demonstrator from Department of Zoology and Environmental Management. Uh, pardon me if I'm making, uh, if I'm wrong, since I am a novice in this eminent forum. Uh, going through the section on climate change, I noticed that uh, many Im financial impacts on climate change have been mentioned, but no financial remedies have been suggested for climate change. Currently, climate financing is a emerging topic in the world. For example, like policies. Uh, uh, 
uh, implemented by the UN Red Program. So if we can, uh, I suggest that if we can uh, provide financial rewards to people at the community level, at individual level, people would be more enthusiastic to participate in uh, climate resilient uh, activities and to contribute towards minimizing climate change. Thank you. I'm not sure because these things we discussed, but then I don't know whether there is in it, or I like to look at, you know, <laughs> I work in military, I don't know whether it's here or somewhere. But see, yes, climate finance is a thing that, uh, of course, uh, uh, we, you know, Red Plus, uh, we, we have a, we had a program and it's over, and the new stage is coming up, it's in the pipeline. And um, as I mentioned, GCF, we are going for a bigger, you know, 50 million or up, 150 million uh, proposal is going on, and we have got two. So, so we are we are tapping uh, whatever the 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 you know finances that are coming for. It is coming mainly for adaptation. But we are, as uh, Professor uh, Hemanthi said, we are not only looking at adaptation. We are looking at uh, mitigation as well. Uh, so, energy, for example, solar, wind. Those type of things are mitigation aspects. And it is easy to get uh, financing if you have a mitigation component in that. So we are working, actually, we are ahead of that. So we, uh, as uh, she mentioned, the, um, the INDCs, all that is there. So we have NAMA program, we have many other programs, actually. Maybe some of the things you are not aware, but if you look at, if you, if you talk to climate change division, they, they can update you on this. Yeah. Everything may not be here. These are general guidelines or general statements are here. Now, the Colombo is the 54% the solid waste uh, generation city. So it's get, it getting worse. So how far those things considered when you are planning this sustainable development? When I go through the references, there's no that one. The megapolis plan is not there. So have you considered all these things? Uh, what are the things that going to happen since we already started those things port city there will be huge uh, <clears throat> problem with solid waste and food and when when the, when, when, we, when we analyze this uh, megapolis they are not considering food aspect so the the population will become almost double so there there is no concern about the food, food the food security and the sustainability there basically every chapter has the way it's structured is it looks at the current status and i think in urban and physical planning that was Touched, but I believe it could be there could be more that is done to uh, elaborate on that. Um, is there something you had to add? Yeah, actually, uh, well, uh, um, we considered all that. Uh, or maybe we have not mentioned on each and everything, but we considered all this when we, uh, you know, develop this environmental thing, uh, because always it has to be tagged along with the economic and the social perspective also. And uh, we, uh, like you very rightly said, this um, this uh, population in this, uh, for example, port city will really be, you know, escalated. And uh, along with it, there will be a lot of waste management issues and energy. We'll need a lot of energy. So, I mean, this document really uh, touches on those and says that we really need to uh, produce sustainable energy. We can't be resorting to diesel, we can't be resorting to coal. I mean, already the government, the central, the Ceylon Electricity Board and then the Ministry uh, of Power and Energy has come up with very, very, uh, very enthusiastic, very uh, uh, environmentally friendly uh, generation plants and using LNGs and also, and by 2050 we will have 50%, uh, that's a more realistic thing, 50% of our energy from renewable resources, including the major hydro. So that's, uh, government has given undertaking at the cabinet level for that. So with regard to waste management also, there's a lot of uh, uh, projects and programs which this did government this document has given a reference only because already it's there and it's 
it, it's going to happen like the, the waste to energy projects and then sanitary landfilling projects and then every province should have two sanitary landfills. All these projects and programs are there. And if everything goes well according to plan, even in this western pro province, uh, the emissions will be almost zero by 2030. Uh, so that is mostly the emissions are from these uh, open dumps and stuff like that. So they are going to have these big uh, repositories of waste where the, the waste could be used for energy as well as for composting. So we have given directions uh, on that, like mostly a policy statement, but then uh, we have given the indications uh, for all these uh, projects and plans, especially Western Province Waste Management Authority Action Plan. They have developed it up to 2030. Then uh, this megapolis plan, mostly to with regard to energy and the transport, because uh, even the 49% of the emissions are from transport. So they have very, very ambitious plans to increase public transport. So um, this has been given direction, but we very rightly we can revisit this one and give like concrete like some directions and perhaps we can have an annexure where these uh, the specificities can be uh, you know included thank you uh, madam i think you can answer this one also another uh, suggestion also uh, page number 172 here you have indicated on marine invasive alien species Actually, it's good that it, uh, it's indicated here, but I'm uh, speaking about uh, invasive species. So now, uh, in Sri Lanka, is suffering a lot because of invasive species, especially if I talk about uh, animal species. Out of 12 invasive animal species, seven have been introduced through fisheries and aquaculture. So I think we, if I, my suggestion is to maintain black and white list, just like New Zealand and Australia. So in a white list, we can mention the species that we can allow to introduce and black list. So we are, this species already invasive in other areas, so we can recognize. Now at the moment, inland fisheries totally collapse because of tank cleaners. I think this is one area that we have to pay a lot of attention. So, I mean, actually, uh, this, this document uh, may not necessarily point out to the two names, but then, uh, of course, uh, within the environment and social perspectives putting together, uh, this has been addressed, but we look at it and then um, put more emphasis on that one because that's a really pressing problem in the country. <laughs> Specifically, yes. there is no any uh, strategic suggestions to protect the animal population in Sri Lanka because it, it, it reduces uh, the population and other environmental issues, but not the animal uh, protection. Biodiversity was barely touched, I believe. Uh, that was one of the criticisms we got at Colombo as well, uh, both Sabargamo as well, that uh, it could be touched more and uh, we could give it more prominence. That's uh, C3. Yeah. Well, I think at the moment, uh, the countries using these are UC and Red List. Uh, and also not only that, but there are other lists which is being prepared, uh, which are not included in that IUCN list. But, uh, well, uh, I think this uh, animal protection uh, 
well, this, uh, I mean, this two-way thing, of course, animals need, I mean, according to this red list, of course, uh, the certain animals are in, anyway protected. And uh, these two are like issues, like they, where they come at loggerheads. And that also, I think, needs to be mentioned, maybe not specifically, like the three conflicts that you mentioned. They are pressing problems to us so that not to kill animals. Even sometimes uh, you might even add to this um, uh, dogs and university students and university conflicts, right? So, I mean, I think that also needs to be addressed because it was an issue, uh, an issue from the animal perspective as well as the human perspective. But there has, there has a lot of things needs to be done not to kill, right? So, therefore, I mean, uh, that also needs to be mentioned, I guess, and uh, coming from the university population, even if you don't mention it, I think I should mention it, <laughs> and we'll put it here <laughs> so that you, you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any further question, uh, at least uh, send them through email. Huh? So, go, you can go through this and uh, send your replies feedback through emails. I didn't I'll this. just add a yeah, yeah. Uh, So if you want to, we highly recommend, because you are some of the most uh, qualified people to share that information, if you can, if you have lengthy feedback to share with us, uh, we have the National Sustainability Discourse website, nsd.lk, where you can read the document, where you can write blogs, where you can submit feedback directly, where you can, uh, you know, watch uh, these discussions as well as uh, consultations we've been uh, having throughout the country and we will be uh, during the period uh, from uh, last August 6th to end of November. Uh, last week we were in Monaragra doing public dis uh, consultations. Next week we'll be going through to Wayamba, Rohuna, um, and it's a long list of uh, district consultations as well as university consultations, private sector consultations. All of that can be accessed on the website. Um, and also you can uh, uh, write to us on our, uh, if you prefer writing on postal mail, uh, Sustainable Development Unit, Presidential Secretariat, um, Colombo 1, Tirasara Dakma, Tirasara Sangwadhanan Share, Janadvati Kalyale, Kolambeka, or you can also call the general hotline, general presidential secretariat line, and they will um, transfer you to our unit if you want to talk to us about it. So, uh, multiple ways you can reach out to us. Uh, we strongly recommend you write to us so we can compile that report and provide it to the review committee. Thank you. NSD, National Sustainability Discourse, nsd.lk. Uh, there's also a mobile application called National Sustainability Discourse that can be downloaded on uh, the Play Store and iOS App Store. Yes, uh, I think we had very good discussion on uh, sustainable development discourse. Uh, we should thank actually sustainable development unit for uh, asking us the feedback and views uh, because uh, most of the time policy makers make policies and forward us to uh, accordingly. Right, uh, we should uh, thank sustainable development unit for taking this new innovative step. Today, uh, Professor Somatipala Professor Heyman Singh and Ms. Tassuri, Tisuri Vikramarachi, sorry, one year she came here to uh, acknowledge you about the sustainable development discourse. We must, we highly thank them. At the same time, we must thank our academic staff members, head of departments and students for attending this meeting. Please provide your feedback uh, after going through this document, even in mail law, uh, go through the website www.nsd.lk Thank you very much. Uh, have a